Hello and welcome to another episode from the Water's Edge. Today you catch up with us on Phil White's boat, the Chinook Free, out of Bradwell, fishing the Thames Estuary. And we've got something a little bit different for you today. We're actually going to try and uh, try and do a catch and cook video. We've had a few requests of could we do a, a sort of video like that, so that's what we're going to try and do. The fish we're going to target today is the skate, or the formback ray as it's known. Now we've been fishing away this morning and we have had an absolutely bumper day. We have had lots and lots and lots of fish. Now I'll, what I'll do is I'll pop a link below for the if you want to see the full video. But for this video, I'm just going to show you roughly what we're what we're using and how we're going to going to go about trying to put one on camera for you. And then what we'll do is is hopefully if we can do that, we'll show you how to clean it, how to prepare it properly, and then how to cook it. But what it is is we've got a, a standard sort of boat rod, 18 to 25 pound class fixed spool reel loaded with 25 pound main line and a really really simple running ledger rig a couple of buffer beads just to protect that knot eight ounces of lead on a zip slider completely free running a nice big swivel just to stop any twist a little clip link which we attach a sort of free free and a bit half foot link onto that then we've got a nice sharp strong 4-0 hook something like that basically the the skate is it got they haven't got teeth as such but they've got sort of abrasive rubbing pads so it's important that we have some some sort of strong tackle and a nice big big hook to to catch them with and the bait we use and we've got a mixture of squid and herring and all I'm going to be doing is I'm going to go over a bit of herring and I'm actually going to use the head. It's a bit that's often neglected. Phil said you get a lot of anglers, cut it up and all the, the heads will go over the side. But as you can see in there, it's full of blood and juices and that's going to put a nice scent through the water and hopefully uh, nick us a fish. So we'll just go straight through the sort of the nose of it if you like. Plenty of hook points showing there. You can see on my hand there's plenty of, of juice coming out. So what we'll do is we'll just clip that hook onto the, the wire of the grip lead, just like so. And all that does is it stop that, that dangling in the boat. And we'll get that out there into the tide. And hopefully we'll be able to put a fish on camera for you. And uh, yeah, go from the, the sea to the kitchen. We'll get it out. Give it a little bit of line. We just cast away from the boat, just to uh, just to cover a little bit of ground, really, and get get some scent work, and then try and draw the fish in. But that's the plan anyway. We'll pop that in the rest. Yeah, and then see if we can't get a, a fish. Show you how to prepare it and how to cook it. But we'll see what happens. Well, we're into a we're into another form back. It didn't take too long, if I'm honest with you. Something's come up, up that sort of scent trail and snaffled that little herring head we put out. And hopefully it's going to be a, a nice table-sized fish anyway. That's what we're hoping for. With uh, a lot of the, the, the form back you're catching out here, 90% of the, well, probably 100% of the, the females that we catch they all go back because they're your, they're your breed and fish, you know. And we've had a few today already that have had the, the sort of egg sacs ready to pop, you know. And you don't want to be taking those fish because they're the ones that, you know, ensure that we can keep coming back year after year to, to catch them. But the little, the little males, they're out there in abundance today on this ground. And they're the, they're the ones we want, really. That's one, of, one that sort of size for the table will be absolutely spot on. You get a couple of nice wings off that and that'll make a, a real nice meal. That's the plan anyway. But we're getting there anyway. This one's not too far off at all. Well, a perfect size male there. He's gonna be perfect for eating. We'll get a couple of couple of nice wings off him you can see he's a male fish because of these these claspers here 
that's what sets them apart from the from the female. And as I said, I like to take the males, and, and so does Phil. It's, a, it's good practice. The big breeding females, you want to put them back, and then these little chaps, if you want to take one or two for the table, then they are absolutely perfect. The size limit for these, has got, they've got to be 40 centimetres, and that's from wing to wing, so that's across there. So long as they're, they're bigger than that, you're, you're able to take them. So it's exactly what I'm going to do with this fella. It'll make a lovely meal. I'll just show you, see where he's taking that, that herring head. You can see that just hanging out his mouth there. But we'll, um, we'll get the hook out, we'll put him in the fish box. And then when we go in, we'll show you a little bit about how to, how to prepare them and, and how to get the, the most out of them. Right. Well, we're back uh, back on the moorings now, and we've got the, the little male skate here that we caught out, and Phil's just going to show us exactly the best way to sort of prep it and clean it ready for cooking, because they're a, they're a little bit different from conventional fish, where you just fillet them, because obviously you're going to look to take the two wings off, which has got, it's not sort of got bones as such, is it? It's more no, it's like cartilage, cartilage running yeah. through it, yeah. But once they're done, they're nice and easy. Yeah. yeah. Nice, yeah, so it's an, uh, quite a sort of yeah. friendly fish to eat yeah, for people it. who you know don't like picking. Once you've done bones. the skinning bit, yeah. <laughs> well, perhaps she'll, well, uh, we're going to show you how to do that. Now. Yeah. yeah, yeah. All right, mate. So, what are you looking to do to start? Well, first, with? first of all, we're going to we're going to do the gutting first of all. So, as we lift it up, we we can see where we're going to cut. We can see the line of the gills. So, we're going to go around there, and that just takes the head off. We leave this bit in the middle there. That's that's the bridge. That's a bit we have to hang on for for doing the skinning. <laughs> yep. So we leave that hard bit in there, you can hear that there. And you see the line of the guts there, so we're gonna take that bit out there. And then that will give us the two wings, what we call the banjo, with the two wings with the bit yep. in the middle. That lets us hang on to the, the fish here while we do the skinning. Cut and sort of two and then we'll take that bit out there, afterwards. So you'll end up with your, with just your two separate wings when we're all finished. Yeah. Okay, so what we do is we're just gonna go through the gills and just gonna throw the line of the gills around so we keep the fingers out the way. And the same again this side there. I'm going to follow the gills around just outside, just outside the, the jaw muscles there. I'm just twisting that now. Now I'm twisting that. Now you can see I can cut down. Yeah. And I'll just take the head off there like that. So now we're going to do, we're just going to lift up there. Now you can see the line of the gut cavity yeah, now. Yeah, so you can see, see where you're going to cut there, there now. So we can just come through there. And I suppose the same with, um, Fill it in any fish. It's, it's quite important to have a good, good knife, really good, good quality sharp, sharp knife. knife. Yeah. yeah, it makes it a lot easier. So we're just going to go around. So we've just gone outside, following the line of the gut cavity around. Whether it's a male or a female, it's the same. But obviously, we only take the males in. So we're just going to just quite hard to cut through the middle bit because that's quite the bony bit there. And I see, and then all the guts and, and everything sort of, of come up, pretty much come out with all, it. That's all come away with it there now. Yeah, so you got already you got quite a nice clean, clean bit of, of yeah. meat to work with there. That's it. So now you can see that, that's what that's what whenever we refer to like a banjo, there you are. You've got your yeah. two wings, the centre bit which will come off once we've done the yeah. skinning. And this is the hard bit. <laughs> <laughs> Not too bad with these smaller nails. We're just going to take. We can't use the gloves on this bit. It's a bit. It's a bit cumbersome. So. Just take the off. So you got your your scissors there, mate, and then this little these little pliers yeah, or whatever. Yeah, that's it. What they call the catfish skinning pliers. Excellent. These are the stainless ones. If you can get them, these ones are brilliant. Certainly for out, out on the boat there, where there's no nothing to rust at all. Excellent. excellent. These are a bit of a job to get. You have to import them. I was going to say they're can, American or yeah, something do, like that. Yeah, do a, do a Google search of catfish catfish pliers and. And um, but it's worth having, even if it's sort of you know fifteen twenty dollars or yeah. whatever they are. But once you've got them, you've got them then. Yeah. yeah don't don't like... lend them out. <laughs> <laughs> no. Just hang on to them because they go otherwise. <laughs> so we're just going to um, we're just going to cut this frilly bit off now. Because I suppose that's no good. There's no meat or anything in there. There's no meat there at all. And quite often when you turn them over, there's little spines that you can't see on this one. But there's lots of little spines quite often along that, yeah. those trailing edges. So what we do is we're going to just snip them off with some scissors. Yeah, you're already neating that up. That's it, yeah, and we haven't lost anything at all. So now we're just gonna just gonna score the skin, that's all we're doing, just to get ourselves started. I guess it's once you've got a grip on it, that's the that's the hard bit, I guess. Yeah, that's it, yeah. So all I'm doing is just putting 
ourselves something to get started with. Don't want to cut too deep because otherwise we're going to start pulling You're off the, the, the meat. meat with yeah. the skin. So we only want to pull the skin off. That's all we're doing there. I guess for anyone who doesn't know, actually on the on the wing escape, you actually have there's meat on both sides, isn't there? Meat on so both once sides. you've cooked it, exactly. you can eat the you can eat the sort of top side and the bottom side. That's right. Like. Yeah, it's all the same. Yes. Yeah, I'm just taking it easy, just putting a little bit off at on. See now it's now see it's coming right nice and easy. Yeah. Same process that side as well. That's it, the same process, yeah. That's it, yeah. Unfortunately we've still got the top to do now. <laughs> you have to do both sides. I have I have cut the middle out before thinking I've done both You're sides. Done. I've turned it over and I forgot to do the other side. <laughs> that's easily done. Especially when you're doing a few. I can imagine if you've got a, a big party on here and they've all got a few fish. Yeah. Do, you, do you have to do it for a lot of them or some people like to do it themselves? Or No, so it's better if I drive the boat. I'll let, let the anglers do it then. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but um, I'm always happy to show them how to do it. So. Yeah, some people like taking these home and doing them as well. I've heard all sorts of stories of people with, with you know, with boards, with nails sticking out of them. That, but it all works. It's just something to hang on to. That's all it is. But whatever works for you. I can see. You can see now why this that that middle bit leaving that on there. Why that's helped you. It yeah, gives you, you something got to, to, have to have pull see, against. I'm, and yeah. I'm really hanging on to yeah. that as well. <laughs> Sometimes you get these little bits there, these little spines there, so we just just get the knife under them and then we can, we can get hold of them again. With the ties and just you thought to see the spines sort of come off with the, off with the skin? Yeah. Yeah. That's it, now the final bit, and then we just cut the skin to the That's our two wings. Yeah, nice and safe. Lovely job. We haven't cut your fingers off. <laughs> then we can just we can give them a good clean. I've still got them all. <laughs> and then we can just give them a good wash off afterwards, get all the slime off of them and they're ready to go. Lovely. Two skate wings. Well, thank you very much, mate. That's Not right. only have you, you put us on the fish, you've also uh, shown us how to clean them. <laughs> so uh, I, hope that's, um, I hope that's helped. If you haven't seen it done before, Phil's shown you there probably you know the best way to do it and the easiest way. And the way to do it, I hope, yeah, yep. cutting any. <laughs> There's plenty of hard ways to do it. <laughs> yeah. So I think um, what we'll do is now we'll take them, take them back home, get in the kitchen, and uh, see if we can cook them up some way. So we've got something a little bit different for you today. I'm basically going to show you a really simple but tasty way of cooking skate and chips. And it's got a, a little bit of a twist, I guess, is it's going to be a slightly healthier option. Basically, I've got a few weddings coming up this year. I need to make sure I can still fit in my trousers. So a slightly healthier, healthier option. Now, if you follow our channel, you realise I don't tend to take too many fish from the beach. I like to put 95% of them back, but I am partial to a little bit of skate. So we've been out with Phil, kept the fish for the table, and I basically just had it in the freezer for a few weeks. And uh, yeah, got it out. I'm gonna sort of talk you through how I like to cook it up. So basically, very simple. The ingredients, what you need, obviously your fish, a few chips, some peas and a little bit of lemon. And that's, that's basically all you need. So st starting off, you just peel your potatoes, give them a little wash, and then just cut them into chip sized pieces. A little tip is just to try and cut them into sort of similar sized pieces because what that'll do is, is when you then cook them in the oven, they'll all cook at a, a similar speed. Whereas if not, if they're all diff different shapes and sizes, some cook quicker than others, you get some burnt and some that are undercooked. So just try and keep them all the same and they'll be good to go. Just get yourself a, a baking tray. I like to get a bit of greaseproof paper, something like that. Just cut it so it fits. 
put your chips on there, and then I think get one of the sort of the lower fat oil sprays, I think it's Frylight is one, give them a good spray with that and then a little bit of seasoning. Personally I just like a little bit of rock salt, something like that and they're good to go. Now cooking wise, I like to cook them for a longer period of time but on a lower heat. I just think they, they sort of cook better in that way so I'll probably cook them on about 180 and then put them in for about 40 minutes, something like that. Obviously you can keep an eye on them because some ovens cook quicker than others, but, but around 40 minutes anyway. Obviously after sort of 20 minutes keeping on them, you can have them back out, give them a little shuffle round, another sort of spray with the, the fry light and then a bit more season if you want. And so they can be left to cook basically. And then it's just a case of getting your fish ready. Now as I said, mine, mine was frozen, so I just got it out the day before. So all I like to do is before, just give it a little while wash under the tap and pat it with a bit of kitchen roll and that's pretty much good to go. Now I'm going to be grilling it, there's obviously, you know, you can put it in a, a chip fat fryer and stuff like that but it's a little bit messy, it's a little bit more unhealthy, it tends to absolutely stink the house out so grilling it's a slightly different way. So obviously you want to get your grill, I will just like to put a bit of tin foil in there because all that does is it just catches a bit of the, you know, the fat and the juices when it's cooking and it, it just saves a bit of time at the end when it comes to, you know, cleaning up. So what you want to do is, as well, is I just like to get a little bit of butter ready. Now you can do this just by putting a little bit in a cup, something like that, popping it in the microwave for around about, you know, 30 seconds, just so it melts and it's, it's nice and, you know, in, in a liquid form. I just put a little bit of that on the grill and then that just stops the fish sticking to it. Then you want to put your, your skate on there and then I just like to give it a little bit of a, a base with a melted butter. And all that does is it just stops it drying out and it will sort of, you know, it makes the fish go a little bit of a golden colour color and a little bit more appealing if it's just pasty white. So a little brush with the butter and then add a little bit of season. And there's probably all sorts of herbs and spices or sauces you could cook it with. But personally, I just like to keep it really simple, a little bit of salt and pepper and that's uh, good to go. There's two sides on the skate, you've got a, a thicker side and a thinner side and what I like to do is first is just cook the thinner side. The sort of big misconception really is, is cooking fish for too long and sometimes you know I fall into that trap, you end up cooking it for far too long and it turns out really dry so probably with the thin side it probably only takes around four minutes something like that it depends on obviously you know the, the quality of the grill you're using but pop it in for about four minutes and just keep an eye on it if you know it might take five minutes might take six minutes but if you keep an eye on it and when it looks done you can just have it back out again and then you turn it over and we're cooking the other side. Obviously be careful not to burn yourself when you're doing it, but turn it over, get a little bit more of the butter, brush it on the fish, a bit more seasoning, a bit more salt and pepper, and then pop it back under the grill. Now the thicker side will take a little bit longer, and I say a little bit, it's probably only a minute or two, something like that. So we'll be looking to, to cook that for around six minutes, something like that. So again, just keep an eye on it. Some will cook quicker and some will cook a little bit slower. But what you'll find is where you see that, that butter work, you get a nice sort of golden edge to the to the thinner bit of the, the fish. And, and that's what you're looking for, really. But obviously, once this uh, it looks like it's done, it's just a case of getting it out and serving it up. And you've got yourself a real tasty meal there. Now, obviously, this is probably the point in the video where I should mention some fancy wine to complement it. But... I'm not a big wine lover, so got myself a bottle of beer to have with it. Coors Light, I think. So I don't know what uh, what you like out there. Perhaps drop us your 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 beer that complements the fish most in the comments below. But it's um yeah, it's good to go and and hopefully it's uh it's it's nice and tasty for you. But as I say, a little bit different today. But I do um I do hope you've enjoyed it all the same. So as always, thanks for watching. Be lucky, and we'll see you again on the next one.